Basics of time alignment. What are we trying to do when we say time alignment? One, create a sound stage with proper placement. Two, create a balanced stereo sound. This is a car, we listen to stereo. It's not 5.1, 7.1, or 9.1 surround. It is two channel audio. Erase the speaker location. That's right, erase the speaker location. You want it to give a good sound stage across the front of the car and not make it sound like it's coming from this corner and that corner. Add realism to the sound. So when you go to a concert, you have sound coming from across the front of you. There again, not from the left, not from the right. So you want it to sound more realistic. Now keep in mind, all these are just what time alignment is supposed to be creating. Not everyone likes that, so don't feel bad if you're like, I don't like any of this. It's perfectly okay. This is just the concept that what we're trying to do when we say time alignment, because I feel a lot of you people um, don't really grasp it. That doesn't necessarily mean you, you like it, though. So if, you, if it's something that's not your speed, <clears throat> feel free to, to just, yeah. But for those of you that are trying to do it, this is what we're trying to do here. What proper stereo sounds like? We have a right speaker, we have a left speaker. In this case, we have a turntable. Listener is equal distance from both speakers. It means you're sitting in the middle, kind of like the Memorex commercial, just all chilled out with the speakers in front of you, giving it good times. Uh, this will give the illusions of instrument and singer placement. With these two speakers, it should sound like you're, you're sitting in a sound stage. There should be a main vocalist, a drummer somewhere behind them, Pianos, keyboards, and horns off to the left and right, depending on where they're standing or where they're placed in the audio track. You should be able to experience all this in proper two-channel audio. The problem we run into, actually, back that up, this creates what's called the solar system of sound, where you yourself are the sun, and we only want one planet to surround us. In this case, you could be the Earth with one moon, but that's whole either way. Sound, you're the main focus, and we want one planet to circle us. The problem we run into in a car, what the solar system of sound looks like, is this. It looks like our solar system, where you're the sun, and then you have all these planets at all different distances circling around your head, and just creating all kinds of havoc. That's why it sounds like there's sound coming out of the left, and sound coming out of the right, and if you lean back, sound coming out of the rear, and it just, it all just, some people like that, and it's okay. Like I said, this is, this is the concept we're trying to get across here, not whether you like it or not. We need to push these out, we need to push all of these out to one. So we need to make our car like this, not like this. Time for some math. Woo. How do you, how do you do this? Well, obviously you need a DSP, so we're just going to assume you knew that. Um, or a radio that has a DSP in it. Uh, radio with a DSP in it gets a little bit more complicated only because they don't always do things. But once you learn all this, you'll kind of figure out what we're talking about. Measure from a center point to each speaker. So, for example, if you're sitting in... <laughs> I like all the round and indoors. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> all right. Measure from a center point to each speaker. So if you're sitting in your chair uh, and you have a friend and you'd like him to measure you, measure or just pick a spot in the center of the headrest. Maybe put a piece of tape there or look for a logo or something like that and measure out to each thing and, and have a piece of paper handy. Make sure to add in space for grill to speaker distance. What that means is that the speaker what are those factory speakers that you had earlier? Oh, right here. <clears throat> Thank you. So if you look at this speaker here and where it mounts in the door, the, this is where we're trying to get to here. Now this, as you can see, this is a factory speaker, but a lot of times when you pull the factory speaker out, you're putting it back in and you're not retaining this amount of depth here. It's, it's shorter. So you need to make sure you add in the distance to this area here on the speaker in order to get proper placement. Unless each speaker has a gap like that all the way around. So if each speaker is this far in, then you don't have to. So 
whatever, it's just easier to add it, I guess, would be the easiest way to think about that. Uh, when using passive speaker systems, measure to the mid-bass. This is a big question everyone asks, is like, I'm gonna go passive, what, what speaker? Mid-bass, go to the mid-bass. Uh, I would like to have Fernando take both measurements just so I can get an idea of what it looks like, but going to the mid-bass is important. This is also what becomes handy when you have the crossovers that have attenuation on them, that have the zero dB and negative three dB attenuation. That attenuation can be used when doing time alignment because this tweeter is obviously closer to you than that tweeter. Simply by switching it down to negative three and leaving that one at zero will also help with that if you don't have a big you know, EQ to play with after the fact. Most DSPs will do the calculations for you, <coughs> meaning you can usually log in like this 37, 35, 39, 56, 56, 58, 56. You can just log those into your DSP and it'll figure out your milliseconds of delay. It'll find your zero point as it were. However, not all do. And when I said zero point is exactly what I mean, the zero point. The distance between, take the farthest speaker, in which case the passenger rear is 58 inches, that's gonna be our farthest speaker. That is the zero point. That is the largest, that is the farthest speaker away from me. I need to push all these other speakers out to that. If your DSP does not do the math, you must find the zero point, subtract all numbers from the largest. So if we take the 37, 35, 39, 56, 56, 56, 58, and we subtract those from 58, what we end up with is 21, 23, 19, two, 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 and zero. A lot of DSPs are like this, okay? And the cheaper DSPs. So for example, um, the Alpines are like this, the Nakamichi was like this, anything that uses the Dayton is a lot like this. Um, a lot of these that use this, this same basic software, they want you to do your basic math and figure out your zero point. They're not gonna do it for you. And they can come up with some really weird numbers that makes the car sound very strange. So don't do that. Uh, so the best way to think about it is if you do like enter the normal numbers and it sounds weird, go back and try doing the zero point and it'll usually clear that up for you. If you have to find milliseconds of delay, which this falls into what the gentleman was talking about before this, how do we do it if we're combining two DSPs together? Well, then you could just find out what all your milliseconds of delay are, and you can just type those numbers in. How you do that is multiply, I'm sorry, divide by 13.5. 13.5 is what equals an inch per millisecond. So if we take these numbers that we took from the last one where we found the zero point, the two, the zero to two, the 19 and whatnot, and we divide those by 13.5, what we end up with is 1.5, 1.7, 1.4. These are all the milliseconds of delay all the way down to the zero point. You can enter those numbers in, which some DSPs will give you the option for inches or milliseconds. So if you prefer to do the milliseconds on your own, this is the math in which you'd need to do that. And what this will help give you is the illusion of balanced stereo sound by moving these planets, as it were, out to the main dark blue ring like you see there. That is going to give us the illusion of what we were trying to do back at the beginning, which is have what proper stereo sounds like. And that, my friends, is the basics of time alignment.